we're going to call the meeting to order. Will everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? <coughs> Please remain standing for a, for a prayer, Mr. Alvarez. Uncover, please. Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessings. Bestow upon us and our friends and our loved ones. We thank you for the opportunity to share with them this special occasion to honor our veterans and our homeland security. Let us always honor the memory of the brave men and women who sacrificed so much so that we could experience the freedom in our country that is free. Heavenly Father, keep the families in your kind care and bless them, comfort them in their time of sorrow and let us remind life, liberty, justice, freedom, and democracy that we may ever grateful to you for those veterans who gave such sacrifice so much to our country. We ask your blessing upon this program that we, before we depart, grant us our continued fellowship and make us abide by peace, that our service and sacrifice not have been in vain. We ask this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. You will be seated. <coughs> Marshal, can we have a roll call? Yes, sir. Councilwoman uh, Mesilla Rojas, not present. Mr. Torres, not present. Ms. Perez. Present. Mr. Agregano, he called me yesterday. He set a doctor's appointment, so he's requesting to be excused. Um, Ms. Ramirez's uh, replacement, Ms. Salinas, is here, right? Ms. Salinas? Oh, I have it backwards. Okay, so you're the primary. Sorry, ma'am. Mr. Segovia, did you hear from Mr. Segovia, Mr. Alvarez? No, I did not. Uh, but mm -hmm. I, I spoke to him several days ago, and his plan was to be here. He, uh, he called me and said he was not going to be able to make it. Mr. Contreras. Present. Mr. Sanchez. Here. Mr. Vela. Present. Mr. Alvarez. Present. Mr. Gabriel Lopez. He, he usually does um, Zoom. I sent him an invitation. I don't know how that, if he's present or not, but I'll check right now. Um, Mr. Geisler Valor. Mr. Sanchez or Gonzalez, they both didn't show up, right, Mr. Quijano? That is correct, sir. They were going to be busy. Yes, sir. And Mr. Quijano's here for Mr. Jackson. For Mr. Quijano? Yes, sir. Present. Sir, you have a quorum. Thank you, Marshal. Next item on the agenda, we have the approvals of minutes for the meeting of July the 12th, 2022. I will accept a, uh, a motion to accept the meetings with any additions, deletions, or modifications. Do I have a motion? Motion. Second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those against say nay. The motion passes unanimously. Citizens' comments. Do we have anybody that would like to address this committee on any issue dealing with veterans' affairs? We, we don't have anybody to stand yes, up. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, Mr. Guijano. Yeah. Uh, okay, Mr. Geisler. Uh, announcement. Uh, just, uh, there's the project in the University of Texas 
Can you come up? Yeah, can you come up and uh, for the record, um, for that time? This one or this one? Thank you. Um, there's a project that they did the oral histories at UT, uh, the professor there, when they did, um, Ken Burns did a film on World War II interviewing veterans and interviewed no Mexican American veterans. This lady has done the project and she came here and recorded some people from Laredo and they're now coming to the library on the, the Joe Gesner Library from four to six Saturday to discuss and to, they want to start up again recording and so I just let you all know Saturday four to six and it's for recording the story of veteranos. Very good, thank you, sir. Okay. Anybody else, Marshal? Yes, Mr. Guijano has a... Yes, sir. Come on up. Four to six this coming Saturday? Yes. This coming Saturday at the library? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, Mr. Uh, Dr. Guijano, for the record. Uh, three announcements I need to make. Sure. The first one is Mr. Garza, Dave Garza, which is the VSO, just uh, every uh, Tuesday and Thursday, um, he's gonna be at the VA clinic. As I'm not sure if some of y'all knew, know that Mr. Danny Flores retired uh, August of 30. So they need a uh, TVC, Texas Veterans Commission representative to go to the VA clinic. So Mr. Garza, that's where he's at. He did mention, he did, you know, speak, tell me that next meeting he is going to be here. All righty. Um, but that's what's going on right now. Uh, since Danny Flores, the TBC representative, claims is out, retired, Mr. Garz is going back and forth. Okay. Um, any questions, just call the office and we'll help you out. Um, the second is for the VFW members also, anyone willing to join? right now life membership it's half price um, just for this month or until funds finish and this is through the Texas State VFW all right um, the third item is the Veterans of Foreign Wars is doing a concert for November 18th and the 19th what we want to do is the veterans the memberships decided to do it go with it and go with it big right not only for the veterans, but for the community, right? The two-day event, November 18, it's gonna be in the afternoon. It's gonna start at four all the way to 10 o'clock. However, there's gonna be from, from five to eight, time still tentative, it's gonna be a veterans resource event. It's between the VFW and collaboration with the Webb County Veterans Service Office. We say it's gonna be a family day event because there's gonna be also Casa Reptile's gonna be there we're gonna to try to get animal petting too from Laredo Safari. Uh, we're gonna contact the pop-up vendors so they could go. Uh, fun and games for the kids, uh, cornhole games. We're gonna have also um, Jenga. We're gonna try to Jenga games. So it's gonna be a family atmosphere, right? On Saturday, the number 19 is the concert. The concert, as you can see, uh, we got the Elmo going on. This is something quick that was created, all right? The main attraction is El Poder del Norte. It's gonna be at the Life Downs, and opening for them, it's gonna be the, the original Sonora Dinamita, right? Prices we're looking at $27 per person, all right, the pre-sale. Now, where is this money going, all right? The VF, as everyone knows, the VFW is a nonprofit organization. The members voted where the money's gonna go, one, we're gonna donate monies to Volunteer Serving in Need, which is Gigi Ramos. Second, it's gonna be for Sm uh, Bella Strong, Smile from Heaven. The third, it's gonna go for veterans here locally, help them out. And then we're gonna save some money so we can have it also for next year, since this is the first year, it's kinda hard for us uh, with monetary-wise. 
any sponsor that wants to see the books, how much we made, we are open to transparency. Anyone wants to see how much we made and came in, went out, we're there. Our books are open. We're doing this for veterans, but not only for veterans, for the community. That's what people need to understand. We want to change the perception, perspective of what a veteran is. We went out there to serve our country. We come back, we want to serve our community. It's not just about us, it's about them too. All right. Um, anyone that wants to help out also, we are open. And for the Veterans Resource event, everyone is invited. Uh, Chairman Lulac 77, Marine Corps, American Legion, uh, Black Widows, Stiva, um, DAV, mm, who else? All veterans. Say again, sir. All the veterans. All veteran organization. Anyone linking every, every <clears throat> anyone having to do uh, with veterans, it's it's open. Um, I already sent emails to the city of Laredo. Uh, animal adoption is going to be there also. Hopefully, uh, PD is going to be there. Static display. So that's what's going on, and it's going to be free of charge on Friday. It's a uh, entrance history. The only thing you want water beverages you just got to pay for and that it's it's free to the community um, what else any other questions yes, yes. Uh, is there an invitation now to the veterans groups to set up a table to recruit and such yes we're gonna be working on that the veterans resource event it's gonna be at life downs right and it's gonna be at the restaurant inside the restaurant so it's gonna be an indoor for the veterans resource event the rest is going to be outside. Uh, we saw it's pretty big. We could line up four lines, and all the organizations could be there. TVC, all TVC entities, um, workforce, Homer Prado, their um, tech uh, vet center, and all organizations, so they could go and recruit, get get those recruitments out there, veterans out there, just to recruit them. Yes, sir. R&R &R has always been an issue with the veterans groups. R&R &R stands for recruit and retain. Okay. To inform the public to join the groups, mm -hmm. to join the groups that are already chartered, to be part of the veterans community. Yes, and it's about knowledge at the same time. It's, it's, that's one thing, you know, we see it's about veterans knowing what's out there. Uh, like the city of Laredo Community Development Department has, it, they're doing a phenomenal job in the grants that they have for the, um, the home modification and the financial assistance. So we try to spread that word and we already invited them. So they're gonna check with their hires, you know, directors, so they can be there and, and inform all veterans and get those DD-214 registered at the same time. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? How long is Mr. Garza gonna be doing that for? That I cannot answer because I do not know uh, Mr. Akinez. Okay. But he did emphasize he will be here for the next meeting. Yes, sir. Is that, I have a question. Is that flyer, is it finalized? Or are you no, ma'am. It's, it? it's, this is just created last night real quick on okay. the go. We do have a couple more sponsors in there. Okay. Um, Whenever it's ready, I'd like for the city to put it up on the on the city page and put it on our resources so that we can keep them Thank spread you, the word. Thank you, Councilwoman. And like I said, all, all this, all the money, so we'll, we'll Hopefully it's a good turnout and goes back and, and we do a, a, you know, everyone see where where the money's going. Mm -hmm. All right. I appreciate that. All righty. Thank Any you. questions? Well, thank you for trying to unite all the veterans. Mm -hmm. With these kind of organizations, we can just do more for the community. It is hard, sir, but it's a work in progress. It is. Yes, sir. Thank you for all working right. so hard. Thank, thank you, sir. You. Thank Any you. other questions? Anybody else, Marshall? Any more announcements? Anyone? Okay, we can continue with the agenda items, sir. Well, the next item is communications and announcements. And following up on what Mr. Quijano just spoke about, uh, this other item and agenda comes in, just kind of ties in into what we need to talk about. If anybody has any announcements or any communications? Nobody? I'd like to speak a little bit on, on the communications about basically following up on Mr. Quijano's and Mr. Alvarez and all of us here that we spoke about before 
about the lack of communication, the lack of uh, disbursing information to the veterans. Uh, and as we know, our mission statement here is to improve the quality of life for veterans. And that's our goal that we're all trying to accomplish here. Unfortunately, one of the, the, deficit, the deficiencies that we have is that we don't have the right tools or the right vehicles to communicate information to our veterans. Uh, what you're doing is, is one way. Uh, the other way that we have, uh, the Loreto VA clinic has a monthly meeting that they had suspended for, for a while because of COVID. And I was privileged enough to be able to attend the last month meeting for the first time. And uh, I was made aware of a lot of information that is available to the veterans that is not being dispersed or disseminated to the veterans. And I'll give you an example, and I want to say this as a means of communicating to the different veterans organizations so they can pass it on to the veterans. The VA clinic has made arrangements with five different Laredo local, Laredo emergency clinics that we have throughout town. I don't have all the names, who they are, but these clinics are accepting veterans for any medical issue at any time at no cost whatsoever. All you have to do is present your health benefits card. And nobody seemed to know about that. I know Mr. Garza was there present at that meeting also. And it's information like that that is important to our to the health of our veterans and, and the improvement of the quality of life that is not being disseminated. So when we have events like yours and us here and, and, and being able to find mechanisms to disperse this information is very important to, to the veterans. So I took it up the opportunity to formulate a letter and send a letter to the local VA and to the Hardinger headquarters, inviting them to select a person to be invited to be part of our committee. I think that it's important that we, uh, we have somebody from the, and we spoke about this before, uh, that we have somebody from the health clinic being able to, on a monthly basis, come out here and put out information like that and, and many other information like the physical therapy department that was opened several months ago. Uh, those kind of things need to be disseminated as, as soon as possible. So hopefully in our next meeting we'll, we'll have some word from the VA, see if they're going to accept our invitation, and then we'll vote and see if we can accept them. Obviously, I think that we should, but it's going to be up to the membership to see whether we accept them or not, if they do decide. The hold up right now is that they have to, they have to get permission from Washington, D.C. to see if they can appoint some or, or designate a person to be appointed to this committee. And just, just to form information that uh, sometimes in the middle of the night or, or on the weekends we have a, a, a minor emergency and, and we can go use any of these five emergencies. The way you can find out is through myhealth.com. Uh, and they, they change, those five change uh, as we go along and try to get some more. But basically that's what I have. Uh, as far as communication and, and announcements. So if there's any, anything else or any questions, we'll move on to the next item of the agenda. And the first item we have is discussion with possible action regarding a presentation of brief across America from Lynette Mead and any matters incident led to. Lynette. Well, I'm excited to be back in front of you guys um, from when I first started. And um, now I'm excited to tell you that Reeves Across America has accumulated over 1,050 1, Reeves. And I have a lot of entities out there that are still going to bring some money in. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I have inside the pamphlet kind of like a, a layout of time, ceremony, <coughs> things that we're going to have. The convoy is going to start at Harley. Hopefully, everybody will meet around 7, 7.30 a.m. Leaving Harley-Davidson at 7.45 to get to the cemeteries at 8 a.m. I put in an application to close Meadow, or at least part of Meadow. Um, I do have a question about that. There's some kind of $2 million liability thing that I, you know, so maybe you guys can look into that and help me with that. Um, but so the convoy is going to come through. The fire trucks are going to be up. I went to the city managers and gave them this list of things that are happening. And um, I've got a lot of response as far as volunteers. I mean, I have troops, Girl Scout troop, 9120 coming, Lazy Boys, 
a lot of different groups, a lot of ROTCs. Tomorrow I'm going to LBJ to get the band there. I want their uh, school band playing. And of course their ROTC as well. So as far as that, I mean, the logistics is moving around. Um, cemeteries are all set up for at least the trucks to move the wreaths around. And then um, I have quite a few volunteers coming out, volunteers to be there at eight. Um, I'll have the school band, say, playing from 8.30 or 9. Ceremony will be at 10. Still looking for a guest speaker. I, I really like a guest speaker. I was trying for Chris Kyle's father, but he's going to be in Corpus Christi. And then um, as far as I assume that the cemetery is going to be set up like it is at Memorial Day and so forth with the tents and all that good stuff and have everybody there and... It's just, it's, it's getting exciting and nerve wracking and scary and all of, but it's, it's moving. It's a forward motion and uh, I'm really excited to bring it here. You guys have questions for me? <laughs> well, we basically we do want to thank you for all the hard work. I remember when you first uh, yeah. uh, addressed this, this committee and uh, the hard work and the status and the city council uh, mm -hmm. becoming a reality. Yeah, well, I have a couple things coming up. I have at Texas Roadhouse on the 27th. I don't know. How does this work? Do I turn it this way? This way. Okay, so I have this event coming up uh, at Texas Roadhouse on the 27th. I'm meeting with the Rotary Club on the 28th. And um, I'm meeting with... Spin it. One more time. Spin it this way? The other way. Other way. Right. One more time. One more. Oh. There we go. I didn't know this was going to be so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm meeting with the Chamber of Commerce on the 20th. I'm meeting with the Rotary, I mean, Texas Roadhouse is doing this on the 27th. I'm meeting with the Rotary Club on the 28th. So I've kind of stacked myself up on a lot of things to get the word out. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I mean, I, I think I'm progressing pretty good. <laughs> Has the city has the city put out any information on this yet? No. We haven't made a post yet. No. And remember, you had told me that my logo sucked, the one that I first gave you. So, in there, I actually went and had a better printed logo. <laughs> if you want to say it like that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did. I mean, come on. I'm doing this with my computer. I'm not really good. I had my daughter help me with the flyer that I have done. So I have a flyer in there, and then I have like that, and I think it's a pretty one, but. Um, yeah, I still am working to get the word out. Now, KDNS is going to do some PSAs for me, which I think is great. Love Ruben. He's going to be the MC, And um, so that way I know KDNS is going to be there that day. So I think it's going to be um, a huge event coming in with the TV there, of course. And then as the ceremony goes on, you know, we'll have the guest speakers and all that, and we'll go through. I'm going to have the national anthem. We are going to have a flyover. And then um, I'm looking for a bagpiper. So if y'all can help me out with that, I want Amazing Grace with a bagpiper. And then um, as we go a little further through, we'll have the ceremonial reeves. And I've picked like some students from the ROTCs to actually do those reeves. And then after that, um, Elizabeth has agreed to speak. So I want her to speak about David. And if I can speak with the other Gold Star Mother, the one, I, she has an idea of what's happening. And the other one speaks Spanish, so I'm having a hard time getting a hold of her. If I can get all three of them up there, that would be great. But I know Elizabeth for sure is going to speak about David. We will give her her reef or the other Gold Star Mothers at the same time. They will go lay their reefs. We're going to have the bugler do taps. And then my gray specifics, I have a couple of those that have come to me, you know, for their father or uncle and... I'll call them up to the stage after that to pick to get their specific reefs and nobody else lays their reef. And then after that, it will all be dispersed. And I think it's going to be really cute having the cute little kids handing the reefs out. You know, like I'm going to have to try to split up the cemetery, like maybe have blue boxes over here and have, you know, the Girl Scouts go to the blue boxes and have the little baseball team go to the yellow boxes, something along those lines unless you have a better idea that I can disperse them out as they come in as groups. Yeah, I think we need to have a logistics meeting. Maybe we can have a committee like from a subset of this committee that can work with you on the logistics. Yeah, just little stuff like that. I mean, <clears throat> I know 
with the trucks and the golf cart things, mm -hmm. we can move the boxes around because, you know, say I'll have 100 sitting over here, 100 here, 100 here. It depends on how many reeds come in because mm -hmm. you figure both cemeteries have about 700 in the front. Both of them actually have 700 approximately on both sides. Um, and then, of course, the rest are the spur. So it only depends on how many I get, how defined I have to be on that. But uh, I think I have it all together up here. <laughs> but we'll see as it goes along. But it's, it's moving along really well. And I have to say that most of the businesses are very um, excited and eager to join with us. So I think it's going to be a beautiful event. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. And just, uh, it's going to be recurrent also, so you can look. For generations to come. That's why I want the little ones out there. I think it's going to be. Uh, a, a real learning process as we go along here. How many wreaths are we are you, are we missing for? Um, well, I mean, it's 6,000 wreaths. I mean, 6,000 veterans. I would love to sponsor them all. I don't know if that's going to happen. I know that I will at least get half with what I have, I know of coming in. Okay. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. But in the folders as well, I have the sponsorship forms and the signed W-9 if anybody would need them or if you can get more word out than myself. <laughs> I mean, I have definitely been running around telling everybody, but um, I don't know how far that goes. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll get this together for uh, PIO to put out. Um, I may need to take it to council. I don't know yet, but if not, I guess to, I'll, I'll figure out logistically how we can get this. So when I went to the city managers and kind of laid it out as far as like, does that, I mean, does that mean like the city helps with that? It depends on what council motion, like if council motion to support, you know, what it, what did council motion to support exactly sometimes, you know? Well, the, the initial one, when I was there for the initial, he said anything that I need or anything I want, give it to her. So I don't know what that means. When was that, ma'am? When was that conversation? March, in so, March when I was here the very first time. Well, that's a difference city manager. That was Mr. Eats, right? Well, you did change city managers, so I have a new guy that, you know, but... Who did he speak with? Well, it was the mayor who told the city manager, whichever one was... Yeah, it was an agenda item that council member Gutierrez had put on. I had missed that day. Um, so I'll just review the, what the motion exactly was, but um, we'll, if not, we'll, we'll do what we need to do to get logistics down. Yeah, because I, I met with the city managers last week, or... Tuesday. Tuesday. So, um... I told them what what I need, so. Okay. Okay. But I figured maybe they get back to me or something, or. Yeah, I'll, I'll follow up. Well, thank you very and much. Don't, for, you. don't forget this to me. We're gonna try to put this one on on the page also. Now. Yeah. For, that's for next week. Just want to promote this event. Yeah, we'll get this one out first. Anybody discussion or comments? Questions. Yes, sir. <clears throat> There's a form that says uh, sponsors. Is that for the uh, donations? Mm -hmm. If we want to donate a read, fill out this and send it to you? Or you can go on the website. I put the sponsorship forms in there, like when I drop off packets to businesses and so forth. But um, basically, if you want to go on the website, you can donate one or two. It's up to you. So. <laughs> But I mean, or, you know, you could give me it and, and I'll do it too. But the businesses, I have them writing the checks to the Reeves and then I'm mailing it out first class so the Reeves gets it because there's a process up there too. You figure they're getting it from 3,200 cemeteries throughout the United States. So I want to make sure it comes to us. That's why the TXL RDO is on there and the 1105 is the two for three group on the sponsorship form. Right, and I love that. That you buy two and you get one free, right? Oh, that's so awesome! I know. So we really only need to purchase two two thirds of the wreaths, and then yeah, I mean, Sames just texted me this morning, which I'm so excited about, and they're sponsoring a hundred, which means hundred and fifty. Right. So that's like, a, <laughs> yeah, I calculate that. Trust me. <laughs> so I'm at ten fifty, which you know I started out at zero, so I can't be upset about that, and I think the community. For one minute, for one second, for one moment, we can all come together for one thing. Well, you've done an amazing job. And, well, thanks. And we thank you for bringing this, and we'll continue to 
we you know help you more some more because we had said you know wait till it's closer but now it's closer so it's kind yeah, of it went fast didn't it yeah it's just it. like that basically. right but thank you so much thank you, thank you. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Uh, next item on the agenda, we have discussion with possible action regarding the Vietnam Veteran Memorial Walking Trail and any matters incident there too. This is an item that Wero, Segovia, and, and some other veterans have been uh, moving. <coughs> and, uh, and I see that we do have a speaker. Yes, because, uh, Mr. Vela. Yes. I spoke uh, with Mr. Chavez, and um, he was going to send a city employee, a city representative, with some information on this agenda item. Very good. Yes, sir. Well, good afternoon. My name is Andres Rubio, for the record. I work for the engineering department. And I'm just going to test out some conceptual maps. Okay. Okay. split up we're not all up here but we're all <laughs> we're all part of we're all vote they say we're not all here yeah. Yeah. Okay. some of us are up here some of us are here I'd like to say good afternoon. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to thank the veterans. Uh, thank you for your service. Uh, so I'm here just to kind of give, give you a brief update. Basically, the property is north of uh, Calton, uh, the Calton Library, Joe Guerra uh, Laredo Public Library. Uh, Calton is down here, and then we have McPherson. So the property we're talking about is here, where Mr. Uh, Council Member Gutierrez is proposing uh, the veteran, the Vietnam Veterans Park. And right now, the focus is on on the trail here, which is basically going around the property. Uh, we're trying to keep as most of uh, the trees as possible, keep it as natural as possible. Uh, the walking trail is, is around uh, 1,500 feet, and it would be a 10, uh, 10 foot wide and uh, made of uh, asphalt. So the, uh, right now it's in design phase. Uh, we, we sent out the survey crew so they can survey the area and then bring, up, bring the, the data back so we can start the design of the trail. Uh, that would be phase one, and of course we have other stuff showing on the master plan. I mean, we have um, uh, with meetings with Mr. with Mr. Gutierrez. I mean, there's some restroom facilities here, closer to the library. I mean, some parking spaces. Um, there's a memorial wall. Uh, we, there were talked about a splash pad or a memorial area here in the, in the center of the park. Some trees and, and sidewalks. Um, some food trucks. Uh, I mean, the location could, could, could uh, change. Some um, barbecue pits and, and picnic areas with shade uh, uh, structures, uh, some checkerboards. I mean, uh, there's a bunch of uh, amenities here, am amphitheater, and then there, there also talks about a mini golf area around the corner. Um, that's pretty much uh, what I have. I just wanted to give you an update. We are working on it. Uh, there is budget I know allocated for this phase one of the project. So it, I don't know if you guys have any questions. I do. <clears throat> How is this broken down by phases? Like what's part of phase one, what's part of phase two? Phase one, well, I guess phase one would be the shared use path, which is the trail all, all around the, the property. Mm -hmm. And again, the, the alignment can change depending on, on, the, on the survey they bring you back. This is with just uh, working with an aerial from Google. Uh, so now when they bring back the, because like I said, we want to keep as most of the trees as possible, so maybe the trail could, could vary. Uh, that would be phase one. Phase two, I mean, that would be de depending on, on the councilman or councilwoman. So I know the, they want to do this before they're determined. 
so it depends on the budget they have and how much they they want to include on, on certain phases. the budget for phase one? Phase one, well, I can tell you the, I don't know how much they have budgeted, but the cost for a 10 foot wide trail is, is around $100,000. Is it concrete? It's uh, asphalt. If, if they want to go with concrete, they could, but it's going to double the price with today's price prices. Um, what about that, that soft stuff that you see around some tracks? That's even more expensive than more. Mm -hmm. The the crushed um, the crushed we're not we're doing something solid right so that to accommodate like for compliance issues right. Is that uh, what we're doing? Correct, that? correct. So so the trail I mean it has to meet the uh, ADA standards, mm -hmm. um, and there there will be some uh, I, I, like I mentioned there's a park parking spaces. Oh, oh yeah, the parking spaces. Uh, along the library so those would have to meet ADA, ADA ramps as well. My, un my understanding of this was that it was supposed to be, the path was supposed to be in the shape of Vietnam, right? And there was supposed to be a tree for every, I believe, is that how, who, there was somebody? That, that's was how it, it this, started when it was proposed for central, the North Central Park because it, the design of the terrain out there kind of lent itself to be able to do that. Uh, as much as possible to depict uh, the South Vietnam, and the trees seem to have been aligned already somewhat. Uh, what Guero and the veterans that actually started this, I wanted to do something similar in this area because there is a lot of trees. I don't know that you can actually do that and, and shape it in the shape of, of Vietnam and be able to be uh, use the, uh, the, the land available more effectively. So I, I don't think that that's gonna be possible, but I believe that this is an excellent uh, rendering of, of, of this this project. And, and I'm sure that uh, Guero and, and the people that started it, and, and obviously I'm a Vietnam veteran also, and, and I think it's excellent. Uh, one of my questions was gonna be parking. Uh, you answer that, and I don't know whether that's gonna be enough parking for the people to start using once this is fully developed because it's something that everybody's going to be able to use. You don't have to be a veteran or, or anybody else. You, I see several barbecue pits, picnic areas, uh, bicycle trail. You have the parking for the library also. Oh, so the parking is going to be here at the library. So that, that should be sufficient. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how, because of all the amenities you have here, how is the public going to be able to enjoy this park whenever it does come to, to completion as far as being able to utilize some of these picnic areas and, and barbecue pit areas. Uh, is it a first comes first serve or do you have to uh, apply for a permit uh, with it? No. Have you I, talked about that yet? We haven't, but uh, I mean, as like all the parks, I think it's just a first come first serve basis. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, it, yeah, look, um, uh, we were saying that, so they, yeah, there's a lot of parking space, so that shouldn't be an issue. Um, the layout could change. I mean, I, I know there was a, there was gonna be, or I know it already happened, uh, a meeting between Mr. Councilman Gutierrez and, and the veterans to see if they wanted a different layout for the trail. So I know you mentioned they, they wanted uh, the map of Vietnam. So that could be, that could be something we, we we're open to, to comments, I mean, we're, we're, we can modify these. Uh, or maybe we the could layout. do the mini golf layout like that or something. Oh, That's another option. Mm -hmm. there, there are several options, and I know that uh, there is some, some renderings out there also that uh, the veterans have. Uh, this is very nice, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, the original concept was that uh, to have the, uh, a tree for every veteran that has have made the ultimate sacrifice and have uh, private donations to uh, put up a bench, you know, where they can go reminisce and, and name each tree for the name of the uh, the, the veterans that the warriors that uh, gave the ultimate sac sacrifice. But at the end of the day, what we need to have is something that the veterans can uh, can have uh, something to reminisce, but more importantly, that the public, the general public, can enjoy also. Uh, what we want to do here is to be able to, to keep the the memories of our veterans, and I think that the biggest, the biggest tribute that we can give a veteran, a warrior that died in combat, 
is to make sure that they never forget. And this type of project will ensure that that happens. Mm -hmm. So I, I really don't have any else, anything else to say except that uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great job. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we need to to wait till the people that really put it together first. And I, I know there's been a lot of conversations, not only with Councilman Gutierrez, but I know Ms. Pena has been involved in some other council people. So this is an excellent uh, presentation, an excellent rendering. And uh, we just need to get the people that really got started and see uh, how far ahead they are, because I know they've been talking to Councilman Gutierrez quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And again, I mean, depending on the budget, I mean, we can always modify the width so we can uh, at least build something, and then they can widen it as as it goes. But uh, I, the, the one, the, the one, the other thing is what Marshal Jimenez just mentioned is the material of the walking trail. You know, concrete and asphalt is pretty hard. And, and obviously the ideal thing would be that uh, the material that they use in track, because it gives you a little cushion. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that would be a lot helpful for the public, but uh, that's something that can be addressed later on and see if uh, revenues or monies can be found or donations to, to maybe make it a little bit more comfortable for those people that, uh, that are gonna be using it. I know that Bartlett Park is used quite a bit and, and it, I think it has concrete, uh, and and people, uh, the public uses it quite a bit. So I'm sure that this would, would have a lot of use also. Mm -hmm. No, that, that's for a good myself, idea. I, I would like to have a little bit of comfort when, when I walk, although I, don't, I can't walk too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll consider all those options. I mean, and yeah, that's a good idea. I mean, we can, they can, I guess, start with concrete and then at later future date, they can pour the, that rubber material so it could be in like a softer, yeah. softer surface. Any other questions or discussions or comments? Thank you, sir. We really appreciate it. There's a question. Is this going to fall under part of the ramp? Any aspect of the ramp? Any aspect of the ramp? The, the original plan that they had for North Central Park was that, that idea that it would be under Park and Ramp. I'm assuming that this will be the same thing like every other park, because it's not going to be just for veterans, it's going to be for the general public also, so somebody needs to maintain it, so the only people that I can think of, the only department is Parks and Rec. That's the only it's common sense. It is, it is very nice, there's no doubt about that. I'm, I'm flattered, to be very honest, and honored. Parks and Rec can handle that, sir. They got to accept Well, that, that's, <laughs> I think this is, this is beyond on what uh, the original plan was. I mean, this is yeah. this is this is major. This yeah. is very 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 nice. Uh, that's not what I envision, or I don't think the, the rest of the veterans have to put this together. Envision it. Envision just something on a smaller scale. But certainly, this is not only welcomed by the veterans. I'm sure the general public will enjoy this this facility also. And that's what it's all about. Again, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you sir. Okay, moving on to the next item on the agenda. Discussion and possible action regarding the tiny homes for homeless veterans and any matter incident there too. I know that there's somebody here to make a presentation. I, I met with uh, Victor and Christina Cuellar Sunday, as a matter of fact, and they're gonna be out of town on a, on a meeting, so I'm glad to hear that there's somebody here to, to talk about it. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Marcela Cervantes. I'm the Housing Manager for Community Development Department. I'm gonna be here to answer any questions that you might have in regards to the Victoria's Point Tiny Homes Project. Um, in a brief overview, the purpose of this project is to reduce homelessness and also increase housing stability within our community. We're proposing to rehabilitate eight tiny homes which are in the process of being donated to the City of Laredo by by Last Chance Ministries on behalf of the Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 9194 in coordination with Genesis Life Committee. These tiny homes will be made available to individuals or household members that are homeless. Preference will be given to homeless veterans. The location that we have right now, is gonna, they're gonna be located on the 22nd, 22 block of Lafayette. The other way down. They're going to be 
located right here in the intersection of Lafayette and San Ignacio. That's where we are proposing the location. It's already been accepted though, right? It has. Right. It's finalized. Yes, Correct. the location. <coughs> and this is the proposed layout. So we're getting a donation of eight um, tiny homes. Um, the layout has 10, just in the future we might add two extra additional ones. There's also gonna be a common area over here on the side, which is gonna provide, um, Genesis Committee, it's gonna provide um, supportive services to homeless individuals and families. That's what they're proposing to do. This is three of the homes that are being donated to us, to the city of Laredo. And this is one of the layouts. There are approximately 200 square foot each home, not including the, the back area, which is gonna be added to it for the restroom. We're currently working on the plans and specifications for this project and we're pending to execute the donation agreement with Last Chance Ministry. And yes, it got um, approved by City Council on uh, September the my, my understanding uh, that the brief meeting that I had with uh, Christina Cuellar and Victor Alvarez and Sergeant Gonzalez, I believe, who is the point man for the tiny homes in San Antonio, is that there's two of the tiny homes in Laredo right now and, and they're trying to make arrangements to bring the other six down. Uh, and hopefully they'll be happening pretty quick. Now, one of, one of the issues here, or not issue, one, one of the things I've been talking about is not only providing the, the location and the homes themselves, in order to be able to service these homeless veterans, uh, we need to provide all the help that we can, mental health, uh, and, and, and I understand all that has been put together and, and, and it's very well organized. I remember when we first started, I know this tiny home concept has been around for a while, but it's tried before, but when we first, uh, this committee heard about this tiny home. We uh, we appointed a subcommittee of, and, and, mm -hmm. and but in the last nine months, with the help of uh, Ms. Perez and the city council and individuals like yourself and Victor and many others, uh, it, it's going to happen here pretty quick. And I think that that's great. Uh, the other discussion that we had is while there is, I believe, 17 identified <coughs> homeless veterans here in, the, in my community. Uh, this could expound or expand rather into there might be some veterans that are not homeless but they need help also and, and not being a, a permanent home but being a transition type project where we can uh, help these homeless veterans or these veterans that need help and then transition them to being viable members of the community and, and that's what's important about this project. It's, it's, not, it's not a handout, it's something that uh, we can help them out and try to help them to become a viable part of the community. community. So uh, this is a, obviously a great project that's been in the works for, for a very long time. And great work by all of you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Does it, does it have a question? Is it that? Yes, come on. Do you have the time frame of when you're going to be accepting um, veterans? What, can you approach the podium, please? Shroud with Texas Veterans Commission. Um, I was just wondering when the projected time frame is going to be for you to be accepting veterans um, to the program and if there's going to be a, um, I know it's for for homeless veterans, but the, is the income going to be a factor to the veterans in order for them to qualify? Okay, um, we estimate approximately 10, 8 to 12 months for us to complete these projects, after which we're gonna start doing the policy and procedures. Um, we might have to follow, since this project is being funded through the home program, which is federally funded, we do have um, income limits. So we're estimating approximately under the 60% income limit annually. Um, that's what we have right, as of now. And it is specifically for homeless individuals. <laughs> and there's gonna be a preference for homeless veterans. But in order for them to qualify, one of the requirements is that the person or household must be homeless initially. Correct. 
And but I think it's important to point out that it's a transitional home. It's not like a permanent home. It's it's a program oh, where they get you know off their you know get on their feet again and transition out. And and <clears throat> I'd like to also add that you know we just passed um, at the city. I don't know if you all knew this, but there's two projects that are coming to the city that are um, under the nine percent um, housing program that we hadn't received funding or any approvals for years and this year we got two one of them is more geared towards seniors and the other one i believe is just a regular you know but for those programs the housing is also subsidized federally i don't know if you want to expand on that but um basically if you make within i think 60 60 percent or below of the median income uh, you can qualify for something like that, which would actually be more permanent. So it'd be nice to see somebody who's a homeless veteran go from this transitional home into one of those homes, because we are gonna be seeing those coming up soon, like in the next couple of years, because uh, the funding was just approved this year. So um, Laredo is getting some nice um, programs and, and I'm proud of that. Just wanna mention that. You, you know, and, and one of the other things that, uh, and, and I could be wrong, so please correct me if I am, uh, it is, I believe that the city right now uh, designates the CDBG money specifically for South Laredo. Uh, we, we divide it up over the districts, but you have to qualify, the area has to qualify. So like in my district, there's only certain areas that would qualify for it. District 6 doesn't have any areas that qualify. So the pool of money that we get is distributed by district based on the areas that need it. Correct, and, and, but some, some of that money based on, on the requirements of CDPG money uh, could be used for this project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just a matter, I mean, of, of, of being creative and think outside the box and, and try to find ways to, to help all, all members of our community. And, and uh, this is also another way of doing it. Uh, I was asked, uh, talking to Victor, that uh, next month or next meeting to put him on the agenda again and he will be able to give us a, a more complete uh, info, information on, on exactly more dates like you were asking and, and of course you, you have some excellent information also this meeting that they're attending has to do with something all of that and all the uh, all the support that is going to be given to the veterans because if we don't give them support giving them just a place to, to sleep it's not going to be enough I'd also like to make another point that um, I've been working with Victor on a location because right now he's working out of the Laredo College but he and I had discussed getting him more a central location so that we could um, work more, uh, work better towards uh, getting like a, a central location for all veteran services. And it's gonna be there by the, the inner city uh, pool area, like that library that's right there off Plum. We're talking about using a room there and having them there, having his organization there and having like a auxiliary space and I think Isabel, we've been talking about that also, right? Are, are we? Have you all moved there yet or not? So that'll help because it'll bring the services more centralized, and veterans will know that they can go there and they can pretty much get taken care of, like whatever they need. And, and that that is something that we have been discussing, and it, it's something that we believe uh, by we, I mean the veterans. Uh, that we having a one-stop shop place would be the ideal thing to have. And, and I know we've been talking, I know that you've been like a nomad, so to speak, you know, you, you, now yes. you're down I'm to two places, but you've been year. everywhere. So uh, that is something that we really need to work on because when we can have a one-stop shop location and be able to get all the information that we're not getting right now, it's, I believe that with uh, that, that would be something that would help the veterans uh, more than anything else that we've done here so far. Ms. Perez, myself and Victor have been in communication um, and I've talked to the director of the library and she has agreed to um, provide us with that office space. She's already shown it to me. I, um, we need to work with Victor's boss and my boss and get a mutual agreements and then the time frame of our mutual agreements of where we're at right now expires in December, so um, they're more than willing to work with us. They've already offered us the space and they're working on clearing it out. We do need to do a little bit of touch-ups on it. It's a hard metal um, door, so we need to put a window on it because there's no windows in that area. Um, just little things that we need to fix and change um, and that we're gonna put into the discussion of the mutual agreements. 
um, but the director of the library has already said that we're good to go. They're on board and they're um, more than willing to work with Victor and myself. They, ju they just need a, a mutual agreement to have the lawyers review and, and, um, and figure out what dates we're gonna be able to switch out. And like I said, my, my director and Victor's director also need to get into an agreement so that we can do one mutual agreement. And the nice thing is they'll be in the same room. They'll kind of be like in a cubicle setup, and there'll be an extra one yes. that'll be available for anybody wanting to come and you know set up for you know however yeah. long just to kind of provide services and so veterans know that they can go there first if they don't know where to go for services, and then hopefully we can bring services. But then also with this tiny homes is that we're going to be bringing those services to them, so they don't have to come there. But so it's it's kind of like. A there's a lot of things going on all at once, but I think that overall is exactly like you said, to further the mission of you know providing services to the veterans and letting them know that they're a priority in the community. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. <coughs> you, you had a, there was a, a question about, and I'm sure this is gonna be discussed later on, and you mentioned that to begin with, it's going to be the qualifications. It's going to be a homeless veteran. Yes, uh, there's families also involved there, but I'm sure that, that that issue will be addressed later on as as this project expands and and, and maybe get more homes there. And primarily, right now, it's just one person. Yes. Correct. No, it can be a couple. It can be a couple. Yes. Okay. They're going to be two persons. Thank you. Yes. Sure. Can I say something sure, before sure. you continue? Uh, I just uh, wanted to say that Ms. Ciarra reached out to us, uh, the new member, and she's very sorry that she's not here. Uh, um, that she just wanted to say she's sorry that she'll be here next meeting. Okay. Very good. Okay. This is an exciting meeting, actually. It, turned, it, was, it started out that we didn't have any items on the agenda, and it turned out a good meeting. I, uh, Thank you. I told him to be, beef it up. <laughs> so... Uh, <coughs> Next item agenda, we have a, a, an item that uh, has been lingering for a while now, and uh, let's see what we can do with this. And discussion and possible action regarding the status of the Laredo Veterans Museum and to set up a town hall meeting and any matters incident there too. Do we have anybody to speak on this, uh, on this item? I, I would like to say something. Sure, go ahead. So we know, and you know, forgive me if I don't know I really don't know much about this. So this was more of my request because I know that when initially we started um, at council, there was a, a big debate on, you know, I think the Farias home and, and where we were gonna put it. And it's my understanding that there's county monies and city monies allocated. And my concern is that the longer we wait, the less money we're really gonna have because if we had a million five years ago, it's like what? 600,000 now you know it's and if we get if we keep kicking it down the you know road then we're not going to end up where we don't really have any money to do anything so uh, I think it's good to get the conversation started I don't anticipate any decisions being made anytime soon but I think it would be good to uh, you know for somebody like me who's doesn't really know all the history and doesn't really understand like what's been going on um, for to kind of try to utilize that money before you know inflation keeps chewing at it. So the uh, the question that I'm being asked by veterans is what we understand of the transactions that happened some years back is that the county and the city had an MOU, a member of understanding. Uh, and put some money together, some, some bond money together mm -hmm. to be able to build this, this facility. And this location was chosen at that time and contracts were signed uh, and everything has been done already through city council and commissioner's court. Mm -hmm. So the question that I've been asked is, what is it that we as this committee are, are expected to do by having a town hall meeting because we really have no power to do anything because the contract has been signed, but I understand the, the money has been encumbered already for, for this location. Uh, so I don't know what is it that our role or 
that's the question that I'm being asked. What is our role in being able to do this, other than make it possible to have another discussion? I mean, there's a lot of rumors out there as to what what it is, whether that location is viable or not, that there's EPA issues or not. And, and I believe all those things have been addressed by city council and, and the commissioner's court. We have no experts to, to be able to do that. But if it's what they want to know is what are the wishes of the veterans organizations, then obviously we can do that. Mm -hmm. So, yes ma'am. Well, So I had a veteran stop by my office and he gave me a pamphlet that had all of the documentation from when the cities met and the proposals that they had and pictures of it. I can provide you with that. I don't know full details of it. I know it are three years ago, I believe. I took part of when <coughs> the designer came and they were talking about it and having ideas on that. Um, and it's all on that on that folder, so maybe if I give you that copy of loaned you that copy. I, I like it back. <laughs> <laughs> um, you could go ahead and see where they're at and what they've done with it so far. So I don't know if that would help. I, I think I, I do want to make sure that, uh, that it's known for the record that this committee is not stopping this project from going forward mm -hmm. because all the necessary contracts, monies uh, allocated has happened years ago. Uh, this committee has been in place for what nine, ten months. Can you put that on the? Because well, wasn't the there wasn't the there like page. a debate on having it at North Central Park, and then and then it was going to become. Uh, is this is this the um, where, where where is this location? Where, uh, is it the Farias home? Yes, it's uh, no, no. not too far from here actually. <laughs> so this is the location that was ultimately agreed on, but then I thought when we had that council meeting that there was still it was still a debate on where exactly I, I i wasn't aware i didn't think that we had finalized the location yet i thought that we were well, still I, I believe that the money that was encumbered was specifically for that location that you were correct I, I i was not part of that that uh, conversation mm -hmm. uh but just what i've read and heard and be told uh, i talked to some former council members that uh, were involved with that and that's uh, can you put the flyer up again, sir? But that, that, that money is, is, that, you, that was encumbered it was specifically for a location. I don't, I don't have this extra time look, right Look here. at the date, Mr. Vela. The, they've been working on this from 2007. Okay. The, and those contracts were, were done. I wish Mr. Gassa was here. Mr. Gassa has a lot of knowledge. He's with the county. So we can talk about it next meeting also. Yes, right? and there's money put aside from both. They, they, they used some money up to do a soil test because there was questions that there could have been an old gas station. So that's done with the, the soil test. Um, Mr. Geiser, you have anything? Because that's your group, actually. Valor is the, the Farias. Before you go on, Mr. Geiser, one of the things that, uh, that I've heard is that that money could be used for something that would be more beneficial to the veterans instead of a, a museum because of the cost, who's going to run it. Uh, the curator for a museum average cost is about $65,000 a year. So who's going to be paying for that? Those are questions that quest veterans are asking me to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know because the main thing is, what I was told is that this money that's been allocated or encumbered mm -hmm. through bond money cannot be moved to be used for anything else. And I don't know whether that's a fact or not, Mr. Geisler, sorry about yes, that. Yes, but like going to the Councilwoman the North Central Park, they put a figure to it and they figured that would cost something like $17 million to do what they were talking about there versus the idea behind this one was more an oral history, more recognizing the veteran, not having a tank or rifles, but the story of our veterans. Mm -hmm. We've been at it for over 10 years. <laughs> and it's um, been, uh, now we've formed Valor, another 501C. We're trying to get more members and, and, and veterans to, to come aboard. Mm -hmm. And at least here we start. Now, the good news is, on, on as far as the property, there were all the things about location. Now, the uh, 
Pan American, the four placitas are going to get cleaned up. Iturbide Street is starting to happen, and the museum is on Iturbide Street in San Bernardo. Mm -hmm. um, the park along the river. So it's a wonderful location, and it's one of the most historic buildings left in Laredo. It was built in 1840. So it's worth saving, but there's been too much infighting. And, and, that, and that brings another question about being a, uh, is it a historical building or not? Because if it is, there's certain guidelines that are. following, those are being observed, and there's only one thing left, and that's architectural renditions of the doors and the window. Right. And for some reason, the architects are disappeared on us. It's already gone to Austin. It's already gotten a semi they're just waiting for the paperwork, and they're good to go. The reason we did Valor and another 501, we've had people approach us and say, I want to donate money. But we can't just take it. We have to be legit. And you're right um, about curators and who, who's going to. But we have two colleges, and one has some of the paperwork. I'll tell you, if, if I may. I, I went to the Holocaust Remembrance here years and years ago, and a veteran came in in a wheelchair. And he was in a wheelchair, and he was a prisoner of war. And he got sent to Auschwitz, and they made him clean up the ashes and look through the ashes for gold fillings from the teeth. His story is gone. I mean, that, was, that is a hero. And that's who I think we're trying to recognize with this museum. It's not so much about airplanes and tanks, but the valor of our soldiers. I have a question, Mr. Gretchen, for you. This is the center group is the one that's spearheading this. What's what's holding it back? I mean, after so many years, the architectural renditions, and I don't know what's going on there, and. I've been dealing with health issues, so I've been out of town a lot to see the doctors. And, but right now, the holdup is that. But the people in Austin are gaga over it. They're saying it's, that paperwork that's submitted to Austin is a good go. Now, the county is kind of in charge. And now, and I agree with you, sir, is, should be in the hands of the veterans. It should be in the hands of a, a curator and, and have people to handle it that way and not be burdened on the city or the county. But let the veterans yeah, take and, care and, of it. And those are the questions that I've been asked, you know, because I've been mm -hmm. asked by several people, uh, when are we going to have the item on the agenda for the Veterans Museum? We have no jurisdiction whatsoever on that. Uh, You're right. All, all the contracts and monies that are out went to court. Have been, it's, it's been done over 10 years ago, like everybody's saying, now like more, more like 15 or 16 years. Yes. So we can have all the discussions we can have here and all the arguments or whatever you want to call it. At the end of the day, whatever we decide, it's not going to be worth anything because we did not allocate the money. We don't have the money. We don't have the contracts. And whatever we say, other than they want to know what the veterans think, yeah, that can happen. But even then, what I understand is that that money cannot be changed for anything else. I've heard different things. I've heard that it can. I know that when you have bond money, there is a lot of requirements, a lot of restrictions. But it can be moved uh, on certain occasions. But I don't have all the techni no. technicalities of how this bond money was, was done. But the fact is that that bond, bond money is there. The city and the county is paying interest on it. And the money is being less because of Yes, like Ms. Uh, said. But also, uh, the money can be used for repairing of the building, which needs to be done. And so, if the county would move ahead and, and start the work on, on fixing the building, and as I said, all these other things are falling into place, and I think that this group can, that the voice, your voice, all of our voices together, united, can get it done. My, my understanding is the county actually owns the building, the land and building. And the city, sure. the, that's what I, that's I, what I heard. Like I said, I was never involved with any of this. 
I heard that the county is actually the actual owners of that location and that the city put up half a million dollars to help renovate it and right. get, it, get, get it started. You try and put up half a million dollars. But the actual owners of the location of the property is, is the county. Yes. <clears throat> so, I, like I said again, you know, what is it that we can do? There's not much we can do except <laughs> support it, not support it, or whatever the case of the veterans might, might do. But even even that, I don't I think I, what you were saying in the, in the beginning <clears throat> about the involvement of the veterans, the, 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 the hands on is right. I think it should be, and negotiations could be done, and I'm sure the county would be more than happy to hand it off uh, if we're united together uh, on a plan. We'll see. That's all go ahead. I would like to, uh, for next meeting, get all of these questions answered. You know, get people from the city and county in here to talk to us about the funding and the options, and then continue this discussion. I, <clears throat> to make sure that, because I think what I got from the council meeting that this was brought up was that we want the veterans to be happy with it. We don't want to just put it up and then nobody feels connected to it or, or wants to go there or feels like it's theirs. And we, we don't want just certain groups feeling like, yes, this is our museum. I think that there's some veterans that are not in favor of this location and I'm not sure who they are, but <clears throat> We do have new members into the group and we do have veterans that are, you know, unfortunately, you know, aging and we want to try to do this, I would hope sooner than later so that everybody gets a chance to enjoy it. But it has to be somewhere that everybody is, the majority is happy with and that, you know, you feel connected to it and not just like we put it up for you and checked off a box and then now we're done. And, and, that, and, and you're correct, uh, there is some veterans that are not in favor of the location. But I also have done a little bit of digging, and I'm told that this location, this money is allocated, is locked in into this lo this location and it cannot be moved. I don't know whether it can or not. We need to find that uh, out. We need to, you're important. correct. We need to find all this. And, and if, if what the city and the county is looking for the veterans' blessing, then that we can do here uh, mm -hmm. by, by having an item on the, on the agenda and voting whether the location is accessible or not accessible, and then the, uh, the people that have done all this contract can do whatever they think they should do. Uh, uh, if that's what they're looking for, yeah, we can do that. Question. Sure, go ahead. Yes, sir. Ed, Ruben Contreras, Disabled American Veterans. Uh, I want to refer back to your question of what do they want from us, from the committee, when in the past and through all this history, the veterans organization has been against the museum from the beginning. We voted against it in the city council. We voted against it in the county chambers. And when it came up for discussion here, we voted against it. Why are we trying to rehatch things that we have already voted 10 times no? The veterans have already voted, like I said, at least 10 times. We always said we don't want anything to do with that uh, museum downtown, the Farias building. And here we are again. I don't know if it's a life support or what. Uh, well, I mean, with the, just we don't want anything to do with it. Mr. Mr. Contreras is, is correct. The, the majority, like you said earlier, the majority of the veterans do want a museum. They do want it. What they don't like is just a location that the, they say that the building is, is not in good conditions and it's going to take a lot more money than what, what they have. Another thing they're against, and you probably remember, sir, is the naming, the naming of it. The, the, the veterans were not in favor of the majority because in the contract, there's the, the name of it. And that's another thing that they're against it. So, but Mr. Vela is correct. I mean, there is a contract. I have a copy of it on my computer. I could share it with you. and. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward. Like, we're so the issue is that the monies were allocated to this specific location, but the veterans are not in favor of it. But you, but the veterans do want a museum just somewhere else, right? Is that pretty that much? Yes, ma'am. That's that's pretty much it. I want to ask the same question again. That's one. What do they want from us? Uh, we already voted 
But you're not, no. you're not all the veterans in Marengo. We could, we could put an item on the agenda, sir, with all the groups, and, and we could take a vote of, of the, what could do that next meeting? Yeah, we, we, what, could, what we could do that and then, and, and, and. When we went to court, we had 65 other veterans that. And the majority voted no. No, the majority voted yes. They put their name on a record and no. they went to court. I don't, I don't remember anybody voting yes. This well, point because of point your order. small group has always been I'm, the this opposition. Point of order. Well, there, this, there, that's the reason why I wanted to have like a town hall format because I wanted for people to be able to express their opinions and for it not to be such a like formal kind of setup how we have here. That's why I thought it would be good for us to get together and, and hash out all these things and it might take a, a couple hours at what, least. What, what, when do you want it, ma'am? So we could set something up. Yeah, we, we can we can certainly do that because we don't we're not we're not privy to what happened 17 years ago. Uh, some of some of some of the veterans are, but I'm not. Right. Uh, I'm sure you're not either. You know. So all all we go by all I'm going by is by hearsay. What I heard, what I read on the newspaper, heard on the, on the news, on, on television. But I, what I do know is, for a fact, is that there is a contract, and that there was bond money used for this specific location. That I do know is a fact. I, I've, I've talked to the people that were involved that signed that contract, and they tell me, and, and you have a copy of it. That I do know. We have no control over that money or that contract. We, by we, I mean this committee. Well, I know that like with our CIP monies, we'll bond out for them and we'll designate a project, but sometimes there is flexibility to like reallocate or, or move them around. So mm -hmm. I don't know if this is one of those. I'm thinking maybe, you know, let the holidays pass, maybe sometime in January. So that gives us time to coordinate with the county, the city, get everybody, somebody who can come and answer the financial questions and then um, get all the groups together and put out a public invite so that we can get people maybe at the public library, the, the room, the big room that they have, we could set up tables and we could have, uh, we'll, we'll have to plan it like a nice way. And I know there's going to be some disagreements and arguments and, and, and there is going to be that. So we just kind of have to plan for that, mediate that. But at the end of the day, we want everybody to feel like they were heard and that they were able to express what they feel. And then maybe that might not be the time to take a vote. Maybe we could bring that to the next veteran meeting or we could you know, take a vote there. That's just my suggestion because we're already in September and October, November, December, you're in the holidays. So maybe we could work towards some kind of town hall for January if, if, if everybody's okay with that. Well, like, like you said, the sooner the better because the money is, <coughs> is dwindling. Every, every year with inflation, if the money is gonna be worth less. Uh, there's the other question that there's been going around is the money that's going to be spent mm -hmm. on, on the museum is it other areas can be used that it be better suited for the welfare of the, of the veterans and because like I said questions that I've, that I've asked the curator uh, a million dollars is not going to get this museum off the ground no I mean I, I've heard from uh, the former engineer that uh, it's going to be just at least a million dollars just in architectural work. Just the architect, just to get the, 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 the design and everything. It's and just a million dollars just for the environmental. All, all of that, I mean, to be able to do that. Yeah. So that money is gone before, before we even <laughs> put anything on it. That's been done. Yeah, that's been done. And I don't know whether that's true or not. I don't know whether that's true or not. The dirt underneath. Well. Like Ms. Perez says, and, and, and everybody here, we need to put it to bed because there is a lot of money there that needs to be put to use. We, the taxpayers, are, are paying interest on that, on that bond money, and that bond money is gonna be worth less and less every, every day. And, and money is just sitting there, while it, maybe it is accruing some, some interest. But the point is that it's been there for 17 years, and, and that money has been dedicated for the benefit of veterans in the form of a museum. Are we gonna continue that? Or are the people that signed the contract? Or, or the, can that money be Move. diverted <coughs> to other areas where it'd be more beneficial for the welfare and, and quality of life for, for veterans? What is it that we want? Those, those answers can be answered by the veterans, by this committee also. Where is it gonna be because of this contract? Can it be broken? Uh, we have no control over that. Well, 
I agree with Mr. Perez that sit down at a table and hash it out. Mm -hmm. Mr. Keanu? I, I, did this, this, this chairman of this committee will, will welcome a, any motion dealing with any item dealing with veterans. So if a motion is made to do that in January or next month or whenever, we'll, we'll entertain that motion. I would like the motion that we table it. Okay, we have a motion to table the discussion of the Veterans Museum. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Could discussion. Could Mr. Sanchez, yes, sir. Before, Go ahead. Can I say something? Yes, sir. Before, Absolutely. Before this, uh, I've been listening to this museum for 17 years. It's about time the city does something. Get rid of them or bring them in, but let's stop all this talking. I, I let's agree. get this museum going. I'm 93 years old. I have very little watch left. I got very little days left. And I'm sick and tired of seeing people taking the can this way and that way. I agree with you. Decide, give it to them, take them out, and let's get a museum. Let's quit all this talking. It's just being back and forth and nothing is done. I worked on that museum for many years. The floors were rotten and it was coming out very beautiful. And Mr. Faria decided to sell it and we got stuck. There has to be a way. God is great. Maybe a miracle will happen and we get rid of them or bring them in, but let's quit the talking and let's build a museum. And, and that's, that, that's my point, is that we don't have the power for that to happen. The power belongs to the city and to the county. Right. They sign the contracts. Yeah. Mr. Quijano. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Um, Councilwoman Vanessa, thank you for bringing this up. And you're gonna hear a lot, um, an earful. And there was there was a town hall, maybe like four four years ago, maybe five years ago. Uh, elected officials were there, um, and it was at the Texas Army National Guard. Uh, many uh, veteran organizations were there. Um, you, you recall, right? I believe Mr. Marks was there. M m many many were there. Many veterans were there. So. It's, it's about bringing it to what the veterans want at the same time, councilwoman. But also, it's not what one individual wants. What I, what I suggest is what's perfect bringing it in January because it gives it enough time for the veterans organizations to put it on their agenda. And that way, the members of that organization can make that decision. And those, once it's made, we can come back to the town hall meeting and actually have what was read on the minutes and who was there and what was said. Because it's not about just one individual councilwoman, mm -hmm. it's about the whole organization and all the organizations in our, commu in our community coming together. Mm -hmm. And that's just my suggestion. And if you want to amend the order of motion. We, uh, we do have a motion on the floor to table the item. We have a second. If there's an amendment to the motion, I'll entertain it now. If not, I will call for the question. Well, Chairman, um, yes. just a point of order. Uh, if it's a tabling, you know, motion to table, it's kind of, we kind of have to vote on that. But if it dies, then we can make another motion. Correct. <coughs> but we do have to act on this motion. Yes. So call for the question. All those in favor of tabling the item concerning the Veterans Museum. Can we have a roll call? Yes, sir. Ms. Perez. Again. Ms. Salinas. Again. Mr. Contreras. Yes. Mr. Sanchez. Yes. Mr. Rocavela. Yes. Mr. Alvarez. Yes. Mr. Geisler. 
and Mr. Quijano. Two against, sir. Motion passes. The item has been tabled. The item cannot be brought back to this committee under these same circumstances because it's been tabled. Or there's the person that made the motion brings it up. For the prevailing For the prevailing, or anybody in the prevailing, uh, uh, which is, means that it cannot be brought back unless those of us that, uh, that voted can bring it back. However, I do agree with Mr. Sanchez and the, the rest of us will be speaking with Perez and everybody else that we need to put this thing to bed. But it's not us that have the control over what we're gonna do with this. We don't have the money, we don't, we don't have, we didn't sign the contracts, we don't have no power, we don't have any power whatsoever. It is for the benefit, not only of the veterans, but the taxpayers that are gonna to have to pay this bond money, that this, this issue is being taken care of and this money has been disbursed in a manner that would benefit not only the veterans, but the taxpayers that are gonna be paying this debt. So we do need to find a way to, to be able to, to continue to address this so, so it'll be done forever. This tabling of this item just means that this committee is not gonna hear this item again unless the prevailing side breaks it up. Am I correct? <coughs> yes, Commissioner, I, my concern is just that if we put it to table, then when are we gonna talk about it? Can we still hold it? I can't bring it up because I brought it, I was the one that asked for it, but now, if we never talk about it, and I understand what you're saying, that it's not the veterans who make the decisions, but at the same time, the mayor formed this committee so that the mayor and so we can get feedback from the veterans, but if we're not talking about issues, then how are we getting the feedback? So we're gonna have to basically put it on our agendas, on council or the county, and make the decision for you all when we could make the decision with you all through the committee, and that's my concern about tabling it is that you're putting, you know, we're, I don't know if when we said put it to bed, we meant kill it, right? Well, I, I think that the fact that it's been tabled and the conditions of the Robert Bruce orders of tabling mm -hmm. means that this committee is not in favor of this federal museum at this location. That's the way I would interpret it. We need to find somebody else to interpret it that way, and that would answer your question to the city council and, and the commission of sport what this committee feels like. I, about this, this particular issue. However, I have not uh, been involved in the Robert Russo order for a while, but I think I am correct. Commissioner, just point of order on the question. Um, sure. you're, you know, the item says the special possible action regarding the status of the museum and to set up a town hall meeting. So if the item was regarding the veteran museum without the wording, so the town hall meeting would not be able to be put on there and the status. Um, but we could talk about the funding. Um, but we, I mean, we, I would like to know the funding information, and I was hoping we could talk about it next meeting. Um, but also, um, just because decisions were made 17 years ago, it's a different council, it's a different commissioner's court. Um, and I understand being good stewards of the county, of the community monies, but I think that our veterans deserve something like, uh, you know. What, what you guys had motioned before, a museum or whatever it is that you all feel that they're, I, I mean, we're doing monuments, we're doing parks and things like that. I mean, maybe we could incorporate an element of it somewhere in some other place, but um, I do think that we need to find a way to be able to figure stuff like that out through the committee so that way it goes, the veterans are the ones that are speaking up and if the city council or the commissioner's court don't want to follow the wishes of the count of the count of the committee then that's a different issue you know altogether but i personally would like to make sure that the veterans um, are heard and feel like you know we're working for order them. order sir this motion has been tabled this question should be ended you're correct you're correct the motion to table the Laredo Veterans Museum has passed. What was it, seven to one, Marshall? Seven to six. Six to two. Six to two. Six to two. We have uh, no more business on today's meeting.
Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Sorry. I want to put out two things because I'm just trying to sleep. You're trying to do what now? I just want to put out information real quick. Um, there's a food drive for veterans going Go on. Go ahead. Just get to the mic. food drive for veterans going on the 29th from 9 to 11 at the VA clinic. And then um, our claims representative at the clinic um, is being he retired, so we are, we're getting um, someone new. And in the meantime, we have Mr. David Garza um, there at the clinic on Tuesdays and thurs Thursdays, which is part of why he wasn't able to be here today. Okay, so thank you very much. I, I would like to make an announcement also. Uh, we have the EPA meeting coming on Thursday. I don't know if you all are following that, but the Environmental Protection Agency is coming to the community to talk to us about ethylene oxide emissions, and I would like to invite the veterans to join us there and listen to what they have to say about um, our community and, and, and that. So uh, it's on Thursday. It's going to be at Tamiu. We have some flyers outside uh, for you all to take and hope to see some of you all there. Thank you, Mr. 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 Vela. Also, there's some food outside. As soon as you walk outside, there'll be some food There's some food outside. All those in favor to adjourn, say aye. 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 All those against? Minutes adjourn. Thank you very much for your participation. What well, it started out to be a very, uh, well, thanks, Thomas. Very small uh, meeting. It turned out to be a, a very good meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.